Welcome to episode 53 of the Legacy Nets podcast. My name is Chelsea. My name is Sue. Um, I'm the daughter. I'm the mother. I am and grandmother. And the grandmother, yes. To be. To be. <laughs> um, and I'm coming to you from Burlington, Vermont. Burlington, Connecticut. And that's our spiel. That's it. Don't um, get much more than that. Nope. That's about it. Uh, welcome to any new viewers that are checking us out. Hopefully you enjoy this podcast. We generally talk about knitting, spinning, um, yarn dyeing, um, yeah, fibery, yarny goodness things, uh, kind of cross stitch sometimes. Um, and to any returning viewers, hello and welcome back. We are so happy. You sounded like Amy Beth on that one. Hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> it's so funny. I love it. You. Hello. <laughs> Um, so yes, welcome back. Uh, we're so happy to see you again. We've been so, we, we are so busy right now and so excited to be so busy. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the fact that my dying studio is a real, I'm out of the kitchen. You have a studio. I have a studio. I christened it today. I've always had this space, but I had a sink put in and I've got an industrial table and... I christened it today. It was so clean. It's it, within 10 minutes, it was like a bomb exploded. Well, it's bound to happen. It's how I work. It's how I roll. I try. If it's clean, I can't work. Like, yeah, it's I can. Chaos. Yeah, I can either have a clean office or I can work. I can't have both. Uh -uh. I can't. And it's, I have to admit, it's a pretty small space, even though it's a decent sized room. If I were to clean off this desk and use this also, it would give me a little more space. But I do not like to have a lot of pots going at once or pans going at once because I really die very individual, like each skein, and I need to pay attention so I can't have five burners going and running back. I just can't. It, it messes with me. It makes me sloppier. I really need to attend to the one in front of me and not feel the pressure. Mm -hmm. So I usually go between two. Two is a really good number, sometimes three. Um, and that sounds tedious, but it really, you know, you just, you have a system and it goes. So I love it. We have, we have some electrical issues popped a breaker immediately it's like whoa what's that immediately so I have a very long cord going into the kitchen and and I I mean it's not an old house I shouldn't be popping breakers well I have a feeling it's probably because the room you're in was originally meant to be was what well, was a porch a porch and then it was more of like a sun like a sunroom office so I wonder I mean, if there's quite a few outlets I have to say there's quite a few outlets but I should know about electricity since grandpa was an electrician. I don't. I just don't. I don't know. I should stop talking about it. I don't know. I, I just. I was just going to ask the dumb question. Can you add a circuit? Like, can you, can you add? I, I, is that yeah, I have two circuits in this room though. It's on two circuits for some reason. I don't know. I, I know nothing. I know nothing except it went and everything shut off. I'm like, darn it. So it's fine. I So now I have a plug going into the kitchen. It's hysterical. And as I'm working on my pots, I plug them in there. And then if I have to use my my dryer, I unplug those. So they have to be done. <laughs> I'll get it down. I'm just going to be like plugging and unplugging all day long. I don't care. I'm so happy. I don't care. Exactly. Exactly. I don't care. But it's so funny. I so wish you could try things before you actually do them. Because, like, the sink, I would have gone with a much bigger sink. It's a smaller sink. I wasn't – I thought it was going to be just like our kitchen sink, and it's not. Is it's it, not. Is it in width or depth or both? Both. The depth, definitely. The depth I can work around, it's more the width. And I. you don't know these things when you're doing it. This is why you, you – if you're lucky enough to build a house, you do it twice. Because the first time you don't know better, like it's like this. If and when we ever were to move and I would have another studio, I know exactly. Mm -hmm. Having said that, I am so grateful for what I have. I am not complaining. No, but there's something to be said for living and learning. and Exactly. But it's 
amazing because I could just walk in the kitchen and make dinner. And like throughout the day, I could actually eat lunch if there was something in there to eat. <laughs> that would have been amazing. So I, I can't even tell you, I can't wait for you to come home. I feel like I don't know when it will be, but the next time you're able to come and have time, you need to die in here. Well, so the next time I'm coming home is end of August, and we are coming down Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Oh, so we might be able to. Might be able I to. feel like you need, although you'll cry then when you have to go back to your kitchen. And I'll have to scale the counters to get my pots. <laughs> I already in one day I'm like I don't know how I did it for that long yeah it's so disruptive to your life when you're dying in a kitchen yeah. it's it this is a game changer a game changer so I'm so excited and, and it's the time everything the timing is perfect got the new stove it's amazing stove broke at the same time didn't want to die on a brand new stove. Like that would have killed me knowing eventually I wouldn't be ex everything exact, exact, exact. So, um, it's, and, and, you know, getting ready for a busy season, it, it's a game changer. Like after we finish here, I have some skeins soaking. I may finish dyeing them tonight before I go to bed and then let them cool overnight. Isn't that a dream? Yes. Yes, the dream. I really feel like I have to pinch myself. I feel so lucky to have the space. Yeah. And honestly, it isn't the hugest. Well, what made it easy for us is it, this room abuts the kitchen. So we shared the plumbing of the kitchen sink. And I, was that easy? Easy enough for the plumber to do? It was very easy, but outrageously expensive. Not what he told me it would be. Yeah, I'm not happy about that. It's okay. It's okay. It's done. And it was it wasn't outrageously expensive. It was compared to what I thought he we were getting into. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? It's a business expense, and we need it. it How I look at it, I'm okay with it. Yeah, yeah. It's so exciting, and I'm so excited for you because I feel like mentally. You can see, you can even see it like in, in your face and like when you talk about dying now, you can just feel like the lightness. It's a whole different story because I don't have to go when I wake up in the morning, oh, geez, I've got to wait a while because I know Jake's going to want to make, you know, he's got stuff to do before he goes to work. And, you know, I, I try to be, you know, reasonable about it. And, and even, oh, now I got to fill my water jug. It's like, oh, you know, now it's like, he can do anything he wants in there and you know it's what it is? Amazing. Yeah, I feel like I don't know, it just reminds me of like when I know I have a day with not like with nothing on the schedule. It's like it's that having that independence, like not having to depend on anyone else to not be there or you know what I mean? Like absolutely. It's it's huge. It's huge. So I am so grateful, so grateful and so excited and Oh my gosh, I've been dying today. Like I had an appointment middle of the day. It didn't throw me because it's like, okay, they're cooling. I'll come back. I'll do this. Yeah. It it makes life as a dyer much more flexible for me. I love it. I know. So that's that. I'm sorry. I won't go on and on. I feel no, like I could, the... literally I could make the whole podcast about my new room. <laughs> I will. I promise. I promise. I promise. Wow. You're wearing a white t-shirt today. Oh, so are you. I what am. Say? I don't know. What does yours say? <gasps> stand up. What the heck? We're twins. <laughs> I love it. So, okay. We'll, we'll touch on that. Yes. So we ordered our needles up swag because we are very excited. We actually haven't talked about it on the podcast yet, but, um, Word has gotten out, and we've kind of let everybody know that uh, we are doing a pre Rhinebeck show extravaganza, a marketplace of sorts. It's so exciting. So, um, Andy and I had gotten together because we really wanted to sell at Rhinebeck, and we didn't know how to do it. We're like, "How are we going to do this?" Because we didn't want to. We didn't want to do it illegitimately or we wanted it to be a legitimate thing we didn't want to be like yeah stop by the house we've got yarn it just didn't feel right 
So, um, and, and I know you felt the same way and it's like, oh my gosh, what could we do? What could we do? And again, the stars are aligning amazingly lately. It was just like, click, 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 click. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got a great venue. Um, we've got a, an all-star lineup of vendors, um, in, in our humble opinion. And I don't know, hopefully you all agree. Oh, unbelievable. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah. And so I guess the big thing is we don't want to talk about it too much because we know that we've been talking about it a lot and, and a lot is out there. Um, and there is a resource. Um, the website is www.needlesup.com. Um, and I'll put it on the screen and I'll put it in the show notes. So head over there if you want to see a list of vendors or purchase some swag. Swag. Um, and also, and you, oh, that's my favorite. I have one of those too. I have one of those too. And I'm not a swag girl at all. I am blown away by our swag. Yeah, I love it. Um, and so it should be noted, though, if you do want swag, <clears throat> we won't be selling it at the event. We are selling it through a third party. So um, if you want it for Rhinebeck, make sure you go over to the website and order it beforehand. That way you can bring it with you. Um, and if you're not going to Rhinebeck, it is, I mean, obviously anybody can go over and purchase the swag. It's, I think the logo is so fun. And I know. I know. It's so, so Exciting. Yeah. It's so, so exciting. Oh, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. I was going to say, um, so Andy and I also did a video. That's why we're not going to go on and on about it. We're going to refer you right over to Andre Sunets on YouTube. And Andy and I did, it's a, it's a rather long production because there's two parts. It's Andy and I talking about the event with finer details than we have. And then we interview the amazing Chelsea of Sucre Sucre Miniatures. And I mean, amazing. And what she is doing for our event, we are beyond yeah. honored. Like that. Oh my gosh. Like she's so, I feel like she's excited as we are. I know. She I know. really, really is. She's so excited. She is only you can get them there in our booth some of these they're just for needles up which is but go watch the interview watch the interview it's um andy and i tried to just let she's so full of inspiration and energy and we really just wanted to sit back and let give her the stage because she's amazing yeah so yeah so yeah, we we don't want to go on and on because that is all over there and go watch it. And so if you just want to watch Chelsea, I believe Andy kind of gives you the amount of time you can skip in order to just see her because it it's two hours. You have to watch it. And we don't typically do two hour things. No, but as someone that did watch it like for the first time, like I wasn't involved in that at all. So when I saw it pop, I was like, oh, when I saw it pop up, I was like, oh, this is great. Like, I'm so excited um, not seeing that it was two hours. And then I will admit at the end of it, I wished it was like I could have listened to Chelsea talk for a really long time. Her, like she's very, funny, she's very intelligent. She's very entertaining, honestly. Like she has this quality about her that is really enjoyable to watch. And you don't really you can't put your finger on why. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with you. Yeah. So. So, yeah. We will, all these links will be in the down bar for you guys to just shoot right over there. Um, like mom said, the interview is definitely worth a watch. It's worth a watch. And she is also, she does have a YouTube channel and she is starting, going to start because she, she's so amazing because as a, these were not intended for knitters. Knitters found her, mm -hmm. her, you know, the use of her charms for knitting. And she has... I think she's so thrilled by it. She is like, she's going to become a knitter. Like she's taken it on. I actually have to send her some yarn. Um, she's, she's just embracing the community, which is lovely. And when she says she's grateful for sales, she's so, she really just exudes gratitude for this community, which I totally understand. And I love her. Yeah, me too. Me too. I really, I hope at some point we get to meet face to face because I would love, love to spend some time with her. She really wanted to be at the event. She really, really did. She's going to try for next year to be with us. I know. 
but we will we we have all the charms they are amazing oh my gosh the problem is going to be like uh, you andy myself amy beth everyone Corey, megan i have to have the whole list they're all going to want them first but we will we won't allow it we'll save them for you we'll try really hard <laughs> But yeah, no, so another really cool part about that interview is that you will get to see the exclusive charms that she is making. So we're not going to go into those details, but she ha she gives you a preview of them and kind of an explanation of how she created them and, you know, the whole gamut. So, Anyways, so that's why we're wearing our white t-shirts today. Yes, we figured you guys could get, and I'm wearing the maternity specific one, so I have lots of room to grow. There are these nice little elastics on the side here. It's um, adorable. I did not know Andy did that. I, when you were like, mom, there's a maternity one. I'm like, wow, I didn't know that. <laughs> and because we could pick which ones we wanted to have available. Yeah. She did it just for you. That's why I love her. I know. <laughs> um, okay. So yeah, that's a really fun announcement. I think that was a good way to kick off um, our kind of administrative announcements. Um, I would say the next one we should do is probably the 25 skeins of Christmas because I know it's been top of mind for a lot of makers out there. And a lot of people are already are, are talking a lot about them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. so, so yeah, we will be um, fingers crossed, knock on wood, because we are insanely busy, but we are going to aim to do another 25 skeins of Christmas. Um, our goal is to have them in the shop by the middle of September. Um, and it will be a pre-order situation again where it's, we'll have, what did we decide? 50? I think we do, we do 50 and it will be, it will be tw 24 mini skeins and then one full size skein. Mm -hmm. This year, I want to make it very clear because last year I think there was a, some expectations that I wasn't aware of. You know, I had said that we would present some sort of an ornament so you could hang it on the tree and, um, people, I think some people really would have preferred it to be a secret, like a surprise wrap so you couldn't see it. And that wasn't my intention because we weren't really calling it an advent calendar, but I totally understand. And so this year they will be concealed. Is that the word I want to use? Yeah. Yeah. So you will not be able to see the yarn until you open the package. Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to be very clear on that because I know there was some back and forth that people, I don't know, maybe might have been a little disappointed. I don't know. You know, I just heard like, oh, I thought it would be a surprise. So I want to make it really clear this year. Yes, it will be a surprise. The big skein, I haven't figured out how I will do that yet, but we'll work on that. I have an idea, but yeah, so, so... Um, yeah, so we will still be doing it, and for anybody that does want it to be a, tra it will be a traditional Advent style, um, a surprise every day. Um, so the packaging will be a bit different. Uh, the price will be the same. It'll be one hundred and seventy-five dollars per kit. Like I said, there'll be fifty slots available, um, and that's and that's pretty much the whole thing. We just wanted to let you guys know that if you if you really were dying to have one of our Advent. Um, sets when to expect them in our shop yeah that's what it will be so i'm super excited about them because i feel i feel like a year later my dyeing skills have changed and the look is a little different sometimes not always so i i'm going to start soon you know a couple of i should figure out how many i should do a week to make it manageable but i'm thinking three maybe a week and get them done. And there will be some on our steel toe base and some some on Stellina. I, I usually do half and half. I, I'm I can't tell you exactly what that will be this year, but pretty much half and half is my goal usually. Awesome. So yeah. yeah, I can't wait. I know it's going to be so fun. I feel like. And you actually talked about you might be dying some of them. Yeah. I mean, I'm definitely open to it. So I want to, I think probably next time I come home, I'll grab some minis and mm -hmm. see what I can do. I think that'd be super cool to have both of us in there. So yeah, there is so much greatness coming around the corner. It and it feels like we've been kind of in a summer lull, mm -hmm. which is very normal. I feel like we all, all are, all of us dyers are kind of there where we're definitely producing, but it's a different feel. 
and I'm feeling a shift. It could be because it's 50 degrees out here. I know. It feels like fall. Like, like I, like I know the last podcast I said, like, I'm so ready for fall and like, and truly I do still feel that way. I mean, I've had some great summer days um, recently and I, I've really enjoyed them, but this weather is just like thrown me right back into the by summer. I want fall. It feel honestly, I feel like summer's over. That's how drastic it is. It's like, I'm never going in the pool again. And it, we went from 90 million degrees to 50. It's quite bizarre. And it's playing with my head like headaches oh I know severe weather shifts are not good for me change of seasons as much as I love it not good for me it takes a while to adjust yeah so yeah yeah the pool was 86 my favorite and what is it now I don't want to look I bet you it's 74 72 I bet you it's 70 I'm gonna go 65 I (laughs) 58 for sure. <laughs> oh, it's awful. I love my warm pool. No. It'll, we've got it'll... it will. It will and we'll be melting and it's funny it was so hot that I was like oh, I can't even think. Okay, I love the heat. I do love the heat cuz I love to float. And this weekend was hot and perfect. I never got out there. I know. When this weather starts creeping in, you have to take advantage of every day. You do, because August can be, believe it or not, everyone's like, oh, August is the hottest month. I really pay attention. It's not. August can be a really cool month here. Well, and you want to know what's the worst is if that happens, then September ends up being blisteringly hot after you've already gone through. Shifted. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's brutal. It's brutal. But that's why we live in New England. I know. And I do love that piece. Yeah, I do. But all right, back on track. All right. I would say that's probably our second big announcement. And then I don't know, I'll, I'll announce the third thing further in. Okay. And we will show um, our new colorways near the end. Yes. Yes. And, oh. the, and we're not going to be forever. So people are like, great. Now I have to watch till the end. We don't have a ton. No, no, there's five, what, four colorways. Yeah, and even as far as a ton of stuff to show before then, like I have a finished object, I don't have a ton, but it feels, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we will be doing a Halloween update, but like mom said, we'll be showing you those um, colorways and giving you those details at the end of the episode, so you can can kind of stop if you're not interested. Right, perfect. Alrighty, well then, what do you want to do? I'm going to show my finished object. Finished object. Are you ready? I don't know. I'm like... What do you think it is? I'm guessing that something baby. No. Not. (gasps) Did you block it too? (gasps) Oh my God. Look at this. Susan. Isn't it fabulous? It is. Fabulous is not even... The appropriate amount of excitement. I, you know, I have not been in a shawl mood in so long. I've had no desire. None of them. I mean, I, I can't say I don't like, they're just not doing anything for me. I'm like, yeah, it's nice, but I don't want to make it. I want to start another one right away. This is the most fabulous knit. So if, if, if any of you live under a rock and aren't sure what this is, I'm sorry. That is not nice. I'm, I think it's fair. It's a rather well-known pattern. It is. It's very well-known. So it's the Exploration Station by Mr. Stephen West. It is. I will tell you why it is the most beautiful shawl I've ever made. His use of texture is amazing. So you go. I, I am not kidding you. In a heartbeat, I could start another one of these tonight. That's how obsessed I am. I might. I might. So you start with your regular garter stitch. He's a garter guy. He, he'll come right out and say it. I love garter stitch. And you know what? I do too. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. And it, it's the colors. Yep. The colors. So it's, I'm so sorry for people. And then I'll go back to the texture because I just totally switched. Okay. But I'm sorry. It's Madeline Tosh. I have no idea. Colorways. So long ago. Yeah, and honestly, I 
think go look at Madeline Tosh and you'll find these colorways. Um, I wish I could be more helpful, but the darkest is a very, very deep purple. It's not a black. I don't know how it's showing up. Did you use singles? Nope. All Madeline Tosh light, light, light. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, so the the texture piece. And and this is what is so crazy. I did all of this. It flew. I enjoyed it. And then I stopped. It is crazy. Okay, that's another subject. We'll go to that next. <laughs> <laughs> my brain, by nighttime, my brain is like, bing, 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 bing. It's okay. So I stopped because of the brioche because... I think I thought I made a mistake, but I didn't. They're guaranteed. There's a few brioche errors in here. To, I don't care. It's gigantic. They're so subtle. I think at the end, I might have done something funky. Not that end. This end. Yeah, see those? I don't care. It's going to be back there. Exactly. I'm like, I'm not, I'm just going to keep going. So the brioche was, so, I love brioche. I love brioche. I love brioche. I just said that three times. I tend to like to say things in threes. <laughs> so then I finished, I finished the brioche. I also love the dark between each section. Yeah. I am such a high contrast artist. That is the key to this shawl. Mm -hmm. To me, if you're picking out colors and you're struggling, go dark, 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 dark right there. That's the key to this shawl for me. And the the pleasing to my eye look is that dark. So then I did brioche. Then I did this funky. I did it. It was in the pattern. <laughs> it's like, a, it's almost like a, it looks waffly, but it's a slip stitches involved somehow. I don't remember. Oh, yeah. And then you go back to, this is a really odd, you work with two colors and you go all the way across with one all the way across with the other back, back kind of brioche like but not brioche yeah as you were describing it to me when I was asking you about it I was like that is so bizarre because it sounds like you should be doing a brioche stitch but you're not and you're not and then this beautiful chevron edge which finally you get to use that dark again and let's just talk about an i-cord bind off it's see for me it's love hate how long did that take you not that long you know what the key is so I was on circular needles and it was bugging me that I was on circulars because I wasn't getting the movement. So I wanted to have all the shawl on the circular and then I wanted a double point to work with. Yes. That's I didn't have a I didn't have a double point, so I unscrewed it. Oh. And worked with that. I've done that before. That's genius. And that was the key to to making it go super it went really fast. It was not long. <laughs> I love, I cannot tell you. I think this is the most stunning shawl I've ever made. I talked about it on my Periscope. I love Stephen West's bright colors. I love when you use your bright colors. I love when Connie uses her bright colors. Those are the three bright color people in my life. <laughs> and I love it. And I even love it for me, but not as a staple piece in my wardrobe. And this, to me, is going to be with my cream vest every other day. Yep. That okay. is how big this is. I can't even do the wingspan. And wait until you block it, because that's going to bloom. I can't wait. I love how you said bloom. Bloom. It's going to bloom. So <laughs> this was sitting in a... I am so going through all my project bags and getting these things off my needles. That... How wasteful. The most gorgeous yarn in the world. So, I, go ahead. I was going to say, I remember at one point we were we were like cleaning your office or something, and it was in that bag, and you were just like, oh, God. I think you did think you messed up on the brioche, and you are like... I did, and I really hadn't. Yeah. No. And I had worked on the meandering shawl, which I haven't finished because I do have a little blip in it, and I'm not sure if I can just power through it. I can't pull it back because I don't know how. It's... But I think it's okay. I just needed to stay. I needed to back away from the meandering shawl. Is it is is your like little oopsie on an increase or a decrease or is it? I think so. 
Yeah, that's tricky. I was going to say, if it's not, I know um, Kristen from Volenvine has a really good, I can't remember if it was on Instagram or her YouTube page, but she's recently done like a brioche 101 how to fix. I do have to look at that, but I also looked at, um, oh gosh, the Knit Stars thing that's coming out. I don't even know how to explain it. And somebody on there showed, and that was so helpful. So I should go and watch Kristen's too, because that would be more in depth. So why did I start talking me in? Oh, so because I had done the meandering, this brioche is like so straightforward. Mm -hmm. I honestly could cast another one on tonight. Do you have the yarn to do it? Like, do you have a color palette picked out? I don't, but I have so much of all of these yarns left. Can I tell you that? so much yeah those see and what you said about like neon versus like a more muted everyday wear it's so true and I feel like that's something that I don't know maybe it's just me or maybe a lot of different people kind of overlook that but when you're planning a project like really defining in your mind like is this going to be a staple in my closet or is this going to be a really fun knit that I don't know if I'll wear it a lot but I want to use these colors and I want to be playing and mm -hmm. it's once you can define that, I think it makes the project a little more enjoyable because you're working towards. You're a hundred percent right. Because I keep forgetting the name of the Stephen West that we took the class. Oh, the, um, oh my God. Marled Magic. Marled Magic. Yes. That one is very wild and funky. I'm dying to pick it up again. Me too. Because I am almost to the brioche. Mm -hmm. Um, and and I really, really like it, but it's not going to be a staple. It's going to be a, oh, maybe I'll wear that today. Where I am, I'm a pretty staple person. I am. But it's it's really made me feel so good to finish it. And so now I'm on to another thing that I am going to finish. And after that, I am going to finish my fade shawl. <laughs> What is the one that you're on to now? You want to see it? Yeah. And then we'll go to you because it's what I'm working on. Oh, okay. It is because it's ridiculous. A half of a sleeve. Oh, yes. So all that's left is a half, maybe a little more than a half. But sleeve it. so fast. I know. And it's, first of all, it's taking up space in my yarn room in a bag. It's ridiculous. So... I'm on a mission. Now, I said this on Periscope this morning. By tomorrow, the mission will be over. But for today, I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission. One day at a time. That's all you can do. I know. Yeah. I just feel like because I also want to go on to baby nets, I'm dying to get back to baby nets. But this is also, both these pieces are clearing up headspace for me. It's like, remember at the end of last year when um, I did that Project Whip? It, the minute you start finishing things and you have enough things now where you're just like this close to finishing them, that it will be so easy for you to do. And that's, that's why I went to this next. Cause this is going to be a fast, another finish, another thing. And then I really, really think I'm going back to my fade shawl because I want to, I love the fade shawl. I don't love my colors. I have to admit I don't remember them very well because we haven't seen it in a while. But I, I remember really like, I remember at the beginning it was hard because. I don't know where it is. It's, oh, that's okay. It, we'll I, bet. Next time. Uh, I, I like it, but I don't love it. It may end up being a gift if I'm really, that sounds terrible. I don't like it, so it's a gift. Here's the thing I don't really like. Enjoy. <laughs> You know why this? Originally, I was thinking maybe I'd give it to Aunt Nancy. I can't. I love it. I love it. I love it. And it was a, it's a labor of love. This was a labor of love because it's been hanging. And it's not that I don't, with the find your fate, it's not that like, oh, I don't like it. It's, it's just not exact. Mm -hmm. And I feel like now that you've started one, I feel like that could be one where if you find your perfect palette, you might knit it again or, or something similar and fade it. You know what I mean? I would definitely, if I could in my brain start over, I would, but I have so much invested in it and, and I like it. I just don't love it, but 
I also have lots of new colorways that might go in there. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Okay, go ahead. I feel like I've been talking way too much. Oh, that is quite all right. Actually, speaking of languishing works, I still have my honeymoon knitting shawl in a freaking bag over there. The hitchhiker? Yeah. Are you okay? Oh my gosh, that is hysterical. I think I just need to bind it off. Like, I really, <laughs> like, it's stupid. Like, what am I, I don't know what I'm doing. We all do it, though. It's ridiculous. No, Ridiculous. And then you attack it, and you're like, oh, my gosh. The next is also, for me, the meandering shawl. I've got to reconcile in my brain because I love it. I love the knit. I'm starting to panic about brioche again. Like, oh, I haven't done it in a few days. Don't panic. Don't panic. I think I've got it. I think so, too. I think once I think my muscle memory is there more than my... Okay, go ahead. Show us what you have. Um, so I finally finished my test knit. I cannot show it to you yet. Darn it. I'm done. All I need to do is take measurements and take pictures, and I am done. That was a huge undertaking you took on. It was. It was. I like, and I almost, like, now that I'm done with it, it doesn't feel real, like, that I can be working on other things without having that little, like, stress man running around in my head. So I started a new project and every time I pick it up, I'm like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. And then I'm like, oh no, I can do this. Mm. You are not, and nor am I, we are not test knitters. Like that was a special request. Yeah. That's why I think you were able to do it. But I'm so proud of you that you finished. I did not, I was like, oh, I don't know if she'll power through because test knitting is a huge undertaking huge I know for me business wise I can't there's no way um but this one held a special place for you and I understand why you did it I really understand and I'm glad you did it yeah but it was huge everyone's like what the heck was it I honestly feel like the knitting gods were with me like they were in my arms they were working my fingers they were like in my brain allowing me to do this because I don't think I've ever knit something so large so quickly. I don't know. Anyway. When is it being released? Do you know? I think, I don't know that it's 100%, but I think the uh, July 31st. Oh. I should say that's when our, that's when our test knits were due, are due. Yeah. Um. So I don't know exactly when the, like, I'm sure I'll be in contact. Probably August sometime. Yeah. Yeah. So. So yeah, well, I'm proud of you and I love it. Thank you. Thank you. So long story short, I started a new project. I was so relieved for you when I saw that. I'm like, you must just be like, oh. uh, and it's, it's, <laughs> I, I cast it on, on Friday, like late Friday night. So I only did like a tiny, tiny bit on Friday night and then Saturday and Sunday, my fingers didn't stop the whole time. Like I, it's, yeah. <laughs> oh, of course I'm mid-row. Oh, hang on. Oh, darn it. <laughs> of course I am. Damn it. All right, let me, let me get my yarn out at least. Oh, geez, at least. Let's see if I can do something here. So, okay. So I cast on, um, oh my God, the Dotted Ray Shawl by Stephen West because... Which you've made before. Not. I have made I have made Jag and Garter, which is very similar, but not okay. the same. It's actually funny you say that because when we met Steven at Nido and I was wearing my Jag and Garter, he was like, oh, I love your dotted rays. And I was like, actually, it's the Jag and Garter. And he was like, oh, that's right. So they look very, very similar. Yeah. But literally after I finished that project, I was like, I need to garter for at least a month. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've been gartering quite a bit and I'm fading it. So I'm, I'm doing this as an, not, I wouldn't say an entry, but I'm participating in the Stephen West, uh, the West Knits fade along is what I think the hashtag is. I'll put it on the screen. You're so good. Um, I just honestly genuinely love him so much and I just want to support him all the time. And yeah. I know everybody feels that way, but like, I don't know. I just love him. So, so I, uh, so the first fade is a little, so this color is a uh, dream phone and I dyed this one for uh, the trunk show and it's in our cashmere base. And you can see this fade is a little more drastic than my next one. Um, 
And then I moved into, I actually did not, I do not have the band for this because I think I went to go use it on something or for something. And then I never ended up using it. Um, I want to say it's life in the long grass, but I don't have a colorway name. Ooh, I've never used life in the long grass. You have some though. I don't think so. I think I gifted it. Oh, I think you did too, actually. Now that you yeah. say that. Um, so I'm going from this, which is life in the long grass to this. <gasps> What is that? This is a stash acquisition that I could not wait to cake up. Um, this is actually Peach Queen Yarns, um, which is, um, oh my God, Jessica. Okay. I was like, I know her name, I swear. <laughs> Jessica, who's Patrick Peach on Instagram. I uh, actually met her at the very first trunk show that we went to. Was it the trunk show? I think it was Volan Vine's trunk show that we went to down at Do You Knit. Um, and I met her down there and she was so sweet. And so we started following each other on Instagram and then have been following her yarn dyeing and, um, have always really liked it. And then I don't know, this one just really struck me and I really liked it. So I ordered it and it's called festival Rapunzel and it came as a kit. So it came with this really cute stitch marker. Oh, cause it's Rapunzel, right? She's like, she, yeah. I think she bases almost all all of her yarn dyeing on Disney movies, which is super cool. Oh, super cool. Super cool. And then it also came with a, um, a download cone for a pattern as well. So yeah, it was super, super awesome. And I really, the color is just beautiful. It's like really subtle, but it also has these really wild, like pops of pink and green. Super pretty. Yeah. So I, I bought that and then here's her card. I'll put her info down the, on the down bar too. But, um, so that was a new acquisition that I got and I literally got it as I was planning this pink shawl in my head. And I was like, oh my God, not even thinking. So hold it up again. I want to see how it knits because it looks so pretty. No, the shawl. I haven't started like chunk knitting it yet. I'm fading it in. Um, but let me see. I don't know if you can. Oh, I can see it. Absolutely. So pretty. Yeah. So this will be a much subtler fade into the lighter. It um, is subtle, but when you get to that chunk, it's you're going to see it. I can't wait. I was really hoping to get there before we recorded, but um, I was just this short of being able to get a little um, enough of it done. And then from there, so let me do this. And then. Ooh. So that's our what? This is our macaroon, I believe. Yeah, macaroon. Oh, that, because it's funny, as I was looking at hers, it reminded me of our tonals all in one. Yes. I could definitely. So it's interesting that you picked that. Because yeah. it looks, that's what it kind of reminds me of, is all those tonal colors, but just mashed into one skein. Totally. Totally. So pretty. I love it because it's like, it's not just pink, like there's purple in here as well. And with our macaroon, you get, this might get a little blown out. But yeah, see how you get the pink and the purple? So yeah. it'll really pull all of that through into this one final light shade. And then I was thinking, I think you I cord bind off this project. Love it. So I'm a little bit torn as to whether I should just bind off with my very last color or... Or for some reason, this is screaming to me, like to really like. Ooh, you're so fun. I would never like as you said. I was like, wow, I don't see that. And then you put it up, and it's like, boom. Yeah, I. So I don't know. I, it'll be a game time decision for me. But I kind of like the idea of having this like pop as a border. I um, do. Justin just got home. Hang on. Yes, he's vicious. Sorry, we're still recording. Hey. hey. Um, so, yeah, that's a thought that I've had. Um, and who knows? I might even go with another, like, like, I don't know. Is that weird? I like the other better because if you hold that one on and then you hold up the whole thing so you can know you're uh, the golder one. And that, because it feels like if you hold it up, it ties back to the beginning in a really cool way. Yeah, I totally know what you mean. Yeah. So I like it a lot. Thanks. Thanks. And actually, so this will lead us to our very last announcement. Because 
Well, kind of our announcement. Do you want to be in this in the frame for this? Month? Justin should be in the frame. He's shirtless right now because well, he should put a shirt on. When is he not shirtless? <laughs> well, he was with Ben, so. <laughs> What's the announcement? He's, what other announcement would oh, I want okay. you to be involved in? <laughs> so, I don't know if it was subconsciously or what, but I've been very drawn to pinks. And I guess that is a good way, a good fun way of saying that Justin and I found out that we are having a little girl. Woo! 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 So exciting. So, so the day that you called to tell us, I'm not kidding you. I was like, their cheeks must hurt. <laughs> you both were like, the smiles on your face. Like, it, it felt like, oh my God, either they're stuck or their <laughs> cheeks are really hurt. It still feels like that way. Every time we either tell somebody or like talk about it, we like, it's so exciting. Having said that, it would have, anything you told me, I would have felt exactly the same. That's the thing is like, even if we had said like, we're having a boy, like we, like, I feel like we still would have had the smiles. Class you us. would because you, your shit, your thinking just goes to whatever it is. And it's so exciting. I... All I want to do is dye pink yarn. I know. And I haven't had a chance. I haven't had a chance at all. And I am dying to do like a confetti. I know. It's so exciting. I know. Well, so some people probably will be wondering if you have been following. Um, I'm only at 15 weeks right now. And the way that we found out the sex of the baby so early um, was through cunatal testing, which is basically just um, like testing for any, um, I don't even know like the proper way to say it, but like any abnormalities or any, mm -hmm. um, you know, potential for a disease or anything like that. And all of those results came back completely normal. And so the biggest thing is we are having a healthy baby. So, yeah. and, and honestly, I think that was a piece of it that day because I could see the relief, not that you were worried, but you, def you know, you're having back issues and any, any twinge, any, anything, you always worry. And I could tell, you know, it's a concern. And that to me, for both of you was more of that than the, it's a girl. It's like, you could just see the relief, even though we weren't worried, but you never know if you're having twinges and, and you were definitely struggling with your back and yeah. it's so exciting. It's so exciting. So we are having a little girl and Again, I don't know if I picked these colors subconsciously or if, like, I don't know. But I wanted a pink shawl, so I'm knitting a pink shawl. And I'm so not that person. I'm not that, like, ooh, pink and purples because she's a girl type person. But, like. You're not. You were. It's so funny because you, having two brothers, to me, you are never a girly girl. You are always a tomboy who loved to go to prom and dress up, though. Like, okay. You you had that balance, but day in and day out, it was like t-shirts and jeans and until, but. Jeans were a dress up day. Let's yeah. talk about the sweatpants and the slippers. <laughs> you're right, you're right. But before that, it, hysterical, you refused to wear, you only wore dresses until you were about seven. And you you just wouldn't. And I remember in your kindergarten or first grade, you were in a school where you had to wear a uniform Yes, and you could, and it'd be freezing out and you could wear pants and you were like, Nope, I'm wearing the skirt. It's like, darn it. It's dirty. <laughs> wear the pants. <laughs> and then something gave all of a sudden, but you, I mean, and you weren't, you were not wearing frilly dresses. You were wearing jean skirts and overall shirt, you know, like little skirts and, but having two brothers, I love that you have two brothers. I love having one girl and two boys. That was my dream. Yeah. Um, because honestly, you can keep up with them like no problem. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Probably better. <laughs> we won't tell them. It'll get to them. <laughs> oh, that makes me laugh. We so, yes, we are thrilled. Yes. So excited. So excited. Um... Yeah, I don't even know where to go from there. So that's my project. Now, was that your only project? I can't remember. You finished your test knit. Yeah, I finished the test knit. And this is really my, I mean, I could talk for hours about projects that I want to make, but we won't do that. I know. Um, yeah, no, I, I'm knitting. 
I want to knit so much lately. And even it, it's funny because usually I'd be like, oh, nighttime I get to knit. There's always something that has to be done. Always. But having, let's get back to my dye studio. <laughs> <laughs> having it in here is, and honestly, the kitchen is one step to my right. <laughs> Those cabinets behind her are the kitchen cabinets. Kitchen, yeah. So it's not like I'm like, but I'm self-contained in this one room and it's small. So I feel like as pots are cooling, I just nestle into my little chair here and I knit a few rows. That is, it's not, it doesn't happen a lot. It depends on how you're dying for the day. It depends on your method. But today's method was some cooling time and it's been so nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we don't have a lot of knitting. So I did have a question on one of my Instagram posts for or a request rather to talk about the yarn bowls that I use and that I photograph very frequently. Go for it. Um, so this is a yarn it. Okay, we have to explain why we have to do that. Because if you keep talking, you don't hear it. The cuckoo clock interrupts the connection. Mm -hmm. So that's why we just stop everything. I love that clock. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> because we both get frustrated at the same points. <laughs> and I was like... <laughs> oh my gosh. So Okay, talk, talk yarn it. Yes. So this is a yarn it. And, um, a very, very, very long time ago, you and I did a little mini review of the yarn it. Oh, what? Uh, oh, do you have yours there? It is. And I've said this recently on a post on Instagram because I've actually communicated a couple times with, um, the makers of the yarn it on Instagram because I do, I love their product and I shamelessly promote it because I think it's, it's, I would say it's my favorite knitting accessory that I own. Um, Can I put in my two cents? It's an amazing summer knitting accessory. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's great for all year long, but especially for the summer. For yeah, the I should that yeah. I said that wrong. It's my favorite time for is in the summer. Because yep. you can go to the beach, you can go to the pool, you can go to a can, in the car. In the car, as I do that all the time as I'm knit, like knitting on the way to work, you pop this little stand out, and then look at this. It's the perfect size for a cup holder, and it just sits there, and then you thread. Okay, let me put it back. Why don't we talk about how you're not actually driving? Oh, yes. This is while I'm passengering. <laughs> Justin and Chelsea work together. Yes. So we drive together. Um, but then, so you stick your yarn right here. You have a choice of three. To, it's hard because mine's clear, but you have three different divots that you can run yarn through depending on where it's sitting. Um, and even I, at one point, when I'm using two little skeins like this, you can fit two in here and have one threading out here and one threading out here. Um, and then you take this and it very easily you pop it. Yep, you pop. Oh, hang on. Sorry. There you go. You have to pop it like off kilter a little, I'm not even, there we go, off kilter a little, and then it just snaps right into place. And there's also a rubber stopper that it comes with. Mine is just over there. I forgot to grab it. Um, it comes with a rubber stopper here so that this doesn't move at all. Um, and then you literally can pull the yarn and it doesn't go anywhere. This rubber grabs onto whatever surface it is on, or if it's in a cup holder, it doesn't move. Um, and it just protects your yarn from you pulling it and it going under the couch or it going onto the beach or going into the pool. It's, I think of it in water situations all the time. The other thing that I love if you're traveling or not even traveling out and about that bottom piece comes off and you can keep your stitch markers in it. Yep. Yep. And actually, I love that. I want to say when you order one, I don't know if it's for all of them, but I think quite often you get a stitch marker in here. Well, we got some of our favorites that I still use. And I just said, like, wasn't this the one with the sushi and the fortune cookie? 
Those are some of my favorite stitch markers. I just saw the fortune cookie. I have stitch markers everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, so, but that is another good, that's another good point. It's a functionality where you can just have your stitch markers right here. You don't need a, a knitting bag. Like as long as you can carry your project and you have this thing, any- Even little scissors, a lot of things fit down there. Yep, anything that can fit into a surface area, it, like mom said, scissors, darning needles, um, stitch markers, even if you had like a tape measure, like not necessarily one like this, but just like a, your normal tape measure that's rolled up, you can bring this with you to the pool, just this one product plus the project, and you're good to go. I think it's so amazing in the summertime for beach knitting, lake knitting, pool knitting. Yeah. It's terrible because I have one and I get it hooked onto one, like my meandering shawl is using it right now and it gets buried and I forget about it. Like I could own 10 of them. Me too. Me too. I, I could. I don't know how I don't yet. Justin even has one. He lives by his. And he does. Let me just say, this is not sponsored in any way. I have not talked to them or colluded with them. This is just me genuinely loving a product and saying it is, I, I want to say they're, don't quote me on this, but I think they're around $30, $35. Um, and it is worth every single penny. And I think they might have two sizes. I don't 100% know that, but. I think they were working on the bigger prototype. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. I don't know if they released it or not. But yeah. anyway, it's the yarn. It, it's awesome. I will put all the information you need and a link to where you can buy one um, in our show notes. And then the other bowl that I always use, which is funny because you always use it too, uh, is a fruit bowl. It's not even a yarn bowl. It's, it's, it's like a fruit colander bowl. Like you can wash your berries in it. That's what it's intended for. And it has like a, a really pretty base to it too, where it will catch any excess water. Um, but it's just so pretty and it works perfectly as a yarn bowl. So it does. Mine is on my new sink with some soap in it. Cause I didn't have anything to put like a bar of good soap in there, but I miss it. I use it. And sometimes I just use the bottom for stitch markers. Yes. Separate. Yep. Jacob bought, brought, bought me this amazing yarn ball. I'm getting so that I really enjoy because I hate chasing yarn around. Me too. It bugs me. I'll be in my office and all of a sudden it's like on the floor and uh, it drives me crazy. Mm -hmm. So he had bought me this and I love it. I do love it. But the yarn it is special. I have to say just the, the, engineering of it if the yarn like on here the yarn doesn't always flow really well mm -hmm. but i still love it mm -hmm. but the uh, the yarn it the the yarn management is perfect in it yeah and i think that overhead coverage too having this on top of it like there are there are times where i will just have it like this because i'm working on two different projects and i pop one ball in and i pop one ball and it works just as well as a yarn bowl without the top but having this, I think, is a game changer for me as far as, like, when we go hiking, I can bring it and not have to – like, we can sit at the top of a mountain and I can plop it on the rock next to me and not worry about <laughs> falling in or <laughs> – The yarn is going down the mountain. <laughs> Somebody chase Off the cliff. Roll it back up super quick. There is a terrific animated thing about that. It was – oh, my gosh, what was it? It's amazing about a ball of yarn. It was on like Facebook maybe a year or two ago. It's terrific. That's so cool. That just popped in my head as I said it. Um, that's awesome. Uh, so yeah, that's um, that's what I use every single day while I knit. Um, like I said, I can't recommend it enough. So, so yeah, I'll pop all that info for you. And then the only other thing that I have to show, I don't know if you have other things, but I have one other stash stash acquisition. Yeah, show it. I've got. I really have nothing. Nothing. Okay. Um, so I've been on a bit of an, a yarn ordering tear. I mean, not even really. I've ordered three skeins of yarn. I know. <laughs> it's just because I never order yarn. So when I do, I do. And I know. We have not in a long time. Yeah. And I feel like lately I was telling mom, my stash is getting down to about one cube. So like one of those cubes back there that those are my dyes but um so I'm really feeling like I mean 
I have a bucket full of like skeins this size that I can easily do projects with. Like I'm not hurting for yarn, but like I like to always have a few really fun skeins available to me if I want to cast on another garter stitch shawl or I don't cast on another garter stitch shawl because <laughs> what else do I do? <laughs> but you really use your stash. I'm always impressed. Like I, my stash is a small, like we are not really big stash people and my, I don't even know what's in there because I get bored with it. I'm like, no, I want something new. And a lot of my stash is intended for sock knitting. See, and that's how my stash started. But I have to say, I've kind of, this is going to sound so dramatic, but I've kind of fallen out of love with sock knitting. And I don't know why. I think I just love shawls too much. And it's mm -hmm. like this big monster that's just taking over my knitting brain which I'm not complaining about. I love it, but it's just, so my intended stash has kind of, I've had to shift my way of thinking about the skeins of yarn um, and like pairing it with other things. And it's kind of, it's a fun challenge, honestly. I was going to say you are, you really are so good at, sorry, I'm looking, there's something in our trees. Oh, that's okay. I'm always looking. Um, I think you're so good at just grabbing and you're, br you're like really brave about it. Like when you put together colors, like when you pulled out that gold, it's like, I would never have done that. Never. And you, you've got a gift for that. So it's good to have all the different. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely is. It's, it's cool. It, it's just the possibilities seem more endless when you have a fun array to work with, but that was a long way around me. <laughs> Mine. Show us what you have. So I finally, finally, finally ordered a skein of yarn from Laura of the Fawn and the Fox yarns. Um, and I'm so it. It's getting a little bit blown out because I'm in direct light. Not too bad. I can see it really well. It's called Pixie Sticks. It's in her otter base, um, which is her 7525. I'm just like sitting here staring at it on my own without showing it. <laughs> so pretty. It's got beautiful speckled qualities to it, but they're like, it's awesome because it's in between these like really nice fit. Like the colors fade really well together. Like it's not like pink break green break. Like it's, it all, it just works. Oh, look at this. I really feel like you could do a fingering weight baby sweater with that. That could be cool. It's Ooh, delicious. I that because oh, what are you gonna say it's just delicious it's just not that it I think if you weren't pregnant it wouldn't even my head would go like wouldn't go there but because you are it's it's just so pretty there's so many colors in there that are warm and it's gorgeous I totally agree with you and I'm glad you said that because I hadn't really had a project in mind I just saw the skein of yarn on her site and I was like oh my god I have to have that and so I like that idea, though. I think it would be beautiful. You too. I know. I have never worked with Laura's yarn, and I feel a special. She has a special place in my heart because you share birthdays. Yes, she's my birthday. So I always and I always think of her on her birthday. It's so weird. So I love Laura, and that is beautiful. And I saw she threw in something amazing too. Did that sweet Laura threw in one of her mini sets. There's a little bit of a glare. I'm sorry. It's amazing. Can you flip it over where there's no tag so we can see? Oh, here. <gasps> oh, here. No, can... you don't have to. I already have once. I can do it again. And I, I will say her packaging is beautiful. Her business cards are beautiful. It is nothing if not incredibly professional and beautiful. Her finished product is amazing. Oh, I love those. I know. She was so oh, sweet. They're... I sent her a note on Instagram. Ooh, these are MCN, too. <gasps> Ooh. Um, I sent her a note thanking her, and she was like, oh, my gosh. You know, I'm so glad you like them, and congratulations on the baby. She was just. Oh, so sweet. Yeah. So, yeah, another shop I would definitely obviously recommend because I talk about her all the time about her podcast anyway. But now that I have her yarn. I can, I can, it's, it's even more beautiful in person. And she, it's beautiful. She gives you these cute little I know. What is the charm? It's a fawn. 
Oh, let me see. Maybe you can see it better if I do this. Now I can see it. Oh, so pretty. It's so soft. Oh. Like not soft colors. Yeah. I can't feel it, obviously, through the screen. I can. <laughs> and I will say for a 7525, it's plush. It's really, really, it's a nice base. So pretty. Yeah. Your cards are super cool. So cool. I love the square cards. Yeah, right? The square card girl. Card girl. Love it. So that was that was my, I have another, uh, Justin and I actually both have a skein of yarn coming, but we'll show that next, next podcast. You're making me want to go buy yarn. You should. I finally, like, after lusting after it, I'm like, why am I not just getting some? Like, it's, I, I know, I'm the same way. Time. Yeah. I always feel like, oh, I probably missed it. Oh, I probably, I'm, I'm not a good update girl. But then I have to admit, like, I've been dying colorways that I'm dying to knit with. So it's so, there aren't enough hours. How many times do we have to say that? I know. I know. Look at that. They're just not enough hours in any of our days. Mm. Anyway. Um, so pretty. Yeah. So, yeah. But I, that is, I'm just looking around to make sure I, oh, have we talked about these yet? No. So we pre-ordered. My gosh, we've been gluttons. I feel like we. I, I can't well, wait. But yes, I need to ship it out to you. I keep saying like. No, send it home with Benny. Oh, yes, yes, I will do that. Send it home with him, and then I've got to remember to tell him he has it, so he gives it to me. Yes, definitely. That's always a piece of it. Um. So. Mom and I, so I follow Stitch Together Studios on Instagram. And if you don't follow them, go and do it. You will not regret it because their feed is amazing. And I don't even know if I follow them. Oh, you should. You should. I will. Help me remember. Yes. Um, so I was kind of stalking their page because I had seen that they had made some of these bags um, for the first time, probably a few months ago now at this point. And, um, I saw them post, like, we're going to be doing another pre-order slot. Like, if you want them, you know, this is when we're doing it. So, and I happened to be on Instagram, like, 15 minutes after they had posted the reminder. So I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going. I'm doing it. <laughs> so, I love it. For mom. Um, they're called Cinch Sacks. That's what the product name is. I know. Um, so are you loving it? I am. Yes. Yes, I am. So... So here's the key to it. It's, this is what it looks like. There's a really sturdy, like, can you hear that? Like, yeah. it is like, so a, is it like a faux leather? It's, it's almost more like, a, like a, oh gosh, the word is escaping me. Is it, it's canvassy? It's canvas. It's like an LL bean bag that's been reinforced with something. I get it. Like a starched canvas almost. Yeah, exactly. I, I know exactly what it feels like. Yeah. Um, I brought this to the river with me on Saturday and like plopped it right on a rock next to me. And like, you would never know. Wow. Yeah. So, um, so it only has a handle in the front, not in the back. And that is because it is meant for you to have it around your arm and not to have anything draping here. And then the way the bag closes is it cinches, which is appropriate because it's called a cinch sack. So as you're knitting, you can have it feeding out while, while it's around your arm and the ball of yarn is not gonna come out. You can knit, knit, knit. Um, and the other cool thing is that if you, if you decide to dedicate one project to this bag ahead of like before you start the project, it does have grommets on the inside. Oh, can, can you see them? <laughs> So I, there's grommets on the inside, so you could have one or two skeins of yarn in here um, and really have them, like, secured. And then there's an additional one, two, four, four additional pockets. Wow. Inside, and then there's a key ring in here. It's, it's a heavy-duty bag. The fact that they're handmade is very impressive to me. I can't um, wait. And they've got these really cute wooden... Love it. Wooden tags, I suppose. And um, yeah. So I don't know if and when they're going to be remaking these, but if 
you like them, at least go give them a follow on Instagram. That way you'll have a heads up if they decide to do another pre-order. And then I can show you, I decided to give you the gray one. I love them both. I know. I was so torn. I wasn't sure, but I feel like you're a gray girl. I am a gray girl. Oh my gosh. I cannot wait to have it. No, it is so, they're beautiful. And I'm keeping it in the bag so that it stays really nice. Um, but definitely yeah. give it to Benny. Yes, I will. I definitely will. And this is the one that I got for mom. And then actually, you know what? Here, cinch bucket. I'm sorry. This is a little of it. I cannot wait. It says the bottom fabric starts out a bit stiff, but will soften and become more creased and distressed with use and abuse. Give it, giving it a well-worn, amazing leather-like look. Yeah, it's, they're very high quality bags. So. I'm trying to, like when I cleaned my office, you'd never know. This morning it was immaculate. Got to work. But what I'm trying, I'm trying to do is to keep my projects in project bags. I'm not a real project bag girl. I just throw it on my desk and then I have five projects. But now with dying in here, I can't have them just laying around like that. So I'm trying really, really hard. So I am so excited about that bag. You're going to love it. It's it's pretty much what I've exclusively been using, that and one of my fringe bags. But yeah. I'm loving the fringe bags. I'm loving the Sandy by the Lakeside bag. I'm loving the Awesome Granny bags because they're big enough. Each one of my sweaters are in an Awesome Granny bag Same here. because they're all fingering weight. They're not gigantic sweaters. They're fingering weight. And they're perfect for it. Yeah. Yeah. So I definitely am. Yeah. Project I can't wait to get that now. I know. Oh my gosh. And it's going to be this week. I know. Can't wait. So that's, Can't wait. that's really all I have now. Sounds good. Okay. Let's go into our update Sounds good. because that's the last thing we have. So, so for you give the details, cause I'm not sure. Okay. And so for anybody that is not interested in the update, thank you for sticking around and watching us. We hope you enjoyed the episode. Thank so, you. Um, and we will see you next week for anybody that is sticking around. Let's do it. So let's do it. Let's the name, the thing that I love the best. Well, I'll talk about the collection and show it, and you can give us the fine details of when it is. Yes. So we decided together. This was really, I mean, I was the dyer, but it's funny how we've started to kind of work together on dyeing, even though I'm the dyer and but it's kind of cool how we're doing it yeah. but we decided to do the nightmare before Christmas for Halloween and people on Periscope were like oh my god I think we're gonna call it the nightmare collection that's what I'm thinking because it is the Halloween piece of the nightmare before Christmas and I talked about this I have to be honest I never watched that movie all the way through you have it's so recent I did I did it. okay good it, Okay, you know what the problem is? I finally clued into what happens to me is I become so mesmerized by the art that I don't know what's going on. I don't pay attention. So I had no idea what was going on. I'd seen, but it's so, fan it's fantastic. Yeah. The art, the art. I mean, and then the story, I love it. I love how they took the classics and, oh yeah. Amazing. So I finished it the other night and I will watch it at least four more times. I'm going to put it on a loop because the music is fantastic. So I love it. And I am so excited about our colorways. Tim so excited. What's that? Tim Burton is a genius. He can do He's, If If there was anyone in the world that I'd want to be as an artist, he's pretty near the top for me. Pretty near the top. I am a huge Norman Rockwell fan. Huge. I grew up with Norman Rockwell art. That was some of the first stuff that I copied as when I was taking oil painting classes. I would kill to have those. Yeah. The four boys playing basketball. I reproduced that several times. I think they were kind of good. Where are they? I don't know. <clears throat> so bad. I'm so bad. Oh, sorry. I had to look at that. Um, so anyways, that's beside the point. He's a genius. He's a genius. Everything about it is just 
I literally could just sit and watch it over and over. I could have the sound off and watch it, honestly, except for that music is so good. So anyways, it's the Nightmare Collection. I'm so excited about it. There's four colorways and then minis. And each colorway is done in uh, steel toe, cozy toe, glitzy, which is the gold Selena, which is my new favorite, um, and DK. So each colorway will have a certain number of those. And then the minis, you can either get the steel toe base or the Stellina. That is, they do not produce a gold Stellina in minis yet. So I stick with the silver. They're still super pretty. It's so subtle, but I love that gold. There's something really warm about it. So anyways, I was going to say, I'm going to my, I do have a favorite and I'm going to keep that for last. The others are pretty tied. Okay. This is Jack's Lament. I love that. So it's got a lot of oranges and blacks and goldens and I love the base color you chose for that. It's a tough one, I will tell you. I really like it. It's hard to reproduce. I, I was struggling with it. It's a hard one to reproduce, but I love it. I love it. I love it. And some, you know, obviously it's hand dyed. So some have more orange, some have more black. This is the one I just chose to show. So this is Jack's Lament. Love it. I love this. This is the one that needs to be made into a sweater. The mayor. Ugh. That is beautiful. Thank you. I have a whole rack of the mayor over there. All his bases are done. That is so cool. And I wonder if I if I have the time and I'm tech savvy enough, I'll try and like put a little picture of each character or like our inspiration for these colorways on the screen as, as mom's showing. Oh, you did such a good job with Oogie Boogie Man. Such a good job. Okay, this is Sally. Sally. Sally's in the pots right now. Part of Sally is in the pots right now. I love that. I do too. Sally's an interesting character. She is a, a really, yeah. She's interesting. I have to watch it again. Like, there's so much that goes on. I could watch it a hundred times. Yeah. Really, truly. Okay, so that's Sally. This is my favorite. I love this. Oogie Boogie Man. I love it. So that character, I remember when I watched this movie as a kid, we were over at Mr. and Mrs. Little's house for like a clam bake or something. I can't remember. And we turned it on, all of us kids, and we were watching it. And I remember when the Oogie Boogie Man came on the screen. He's pretty terrifying for children. You know what? I'm terrible because you guys aren't little anymore. I So I think Sophia asked me about a movie, like, is that good for kids? And I was like, I didn't watch it through kids. You know what I mean? Like through kids' eyes because that's how I used to watch movies to think, how would I feel there? Or, boy, that's really inappropriate. Yeah. Now I'm going to watch it that way next time. Because he's like, pretty crazy. He's crazy. He's, and like at one point, that I mean, I don't think I'm giving anything away. I, I think everyone has watched. Yeah, but at, <laughs> so he's made out of like a burlap sack, basically, is what he is. And he's filled with like worms and spiders. And like at one point, he like unravels and you see like the inside of him. And it's, it's haunting. <laughs> it is. It is. That's so funny because I have to watch it that way now. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, but, yeah. but. Okay, so Oogie Boogie Man, uh, I love it. It's I, love I, will, it. I will definitely put a picture of the scene that we drew inspiration from because when you look at that scene, it's just the colors are so dead on. Okay, you want to know what's really funny? I didn't watch the scene, and I dyed it, and when the scene came on, I was like, whoa, wow. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. I just, you know, I saw, like, stills of it, and I got a thought of it. But when I watched it, I was like, wow. It's super like, cool. You know. It's so cool. So cool. And then we have the Shrunken Head Minis, which is one of each colorway. And I love them. They look really nice together. Well, you know, it's so interesting because I'm, this is a fade right here. A fade in the making. It's so true. Is it these two? These two fade beautifully. For sure. Uh -huh. And then even if you were to go into Jack's Lament from Sally. You could even do that. 
Absolutely. Wow. A little, yeah. You could, I mean, Oogie Boogie definitely is a separate, um, but these three to me could easily work together for a three color shawl. Even, um, even if you did Sally, four main food groups, Oogie Boogie, like you could get a really electric fade out of a few of our colorways. Yeah. It's funny how so many of our colorways fade well together. I think that's just because as a dyer, I have a certain flow of how I dye, and I think it comes out in a lot of the colorways where, like, just the, so this has a little teeny touch of one color, which you carry to the next, and you carry to the next, so, so I, um, it's funny, when I started the collection, I thought, oh, I have to do a Halloween one, oh my gosh, like, I wasn't feeling super inspired by it. And then I started working and it was like, I was on fire. It was so much fun. It was so much fun. So I love, somebody did want to see on Periscope these two together. They are very different. Even though they're both orange, they're very different. You yeah. can see it. It's a, a total different family. This is a very bright orange or this. I almost reminds me of like peas and carrots. Cause there's a the little bit of green in there that so yeah so that's that the update i am hoping to really it's gonna be a pretty substantial update i'm really working we were originally we we're gonna do it this week and then we upped it a week so i will have an opportunity to make it a pretty good size update yeah yeah absolutely Which I'm dying to do yes yeah so the update will be um oh let me just look at the count i know i can't remember when we said I remember it's next Friday. I just don't remember the date. I want to say it's the 4th. 4th. I think you said August 4th. That's ringing a bell. Yeah. So it'll be Friday, August 4th at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, yeah. So if you're interested, uh, I would... I, we don't know because we've been doing a different kind of shop style lately. So I don't know how quickly they'll go. But if, if you really, really love a color and you really, really want it, um, I would recommend maybe setting an alarm and... and trying to be there for six but um, yeah mom is really good about you know if you send a message and if i can if i can accommodate i always do work we are hitting a crunch time where pretty much every day is called for you know i've been able to get some sweaters quantities out to people over the summer always ask that's yeah. what i say always ask and if i can i will um somebody on periscope said are you going to bring these to needles up I think so, but I don't want to promise anything. And, and I also, will this be the only Halloween update? I don't know. It really depends on a lot of things. A lot of things. I do the best I can to get them out. Mm -hmm. I don't want to make it like, oh, you can't get them. Like, but I have to be realistic. Right. And that's why I wanted this update to be pretty substantial in case I can't get another one up before. Because I'd also love to throw the baby colorways out again. Because that was just a blip. Yeah. We hardly even did them. I would love to spend a couple of days throwing those in the shop. And like we talked about, if it's not a scheduled update, it could be just throwing them in. And that could happen. I'd like to think that might happen. Yep. I don't know. I'm not helpful. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. But we will. we do our best to kind of keep you guys updated on Instagram. So... If you don't follow us there, I would definitely recommend going over and giving us a follow. And um, most of the time, we like to give you a decent amount of time to <clears throat> know what's going on. Um, but like Mom said, we've been kind of just dying and listing, dying and listing. So, you know, if you have some time and you feel like going over the shop, there may or may not be something there for you. I'm so excited. I feel like we're back in full swing again. I feel like even though it's still summer, the summer hours are over. It's on to, it's crunch time, yeah. which is so exciting for me. So Because I have a new studio. Yeah. We won't talk about it. <laughs> Wait, you have a new studio? Oh, no, I don't. I'll, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> oh, awesome. Oh, right. my gosh. I feel like that's about it. That's all we got for you. I feel like we're done. I've still got to wrap up a few things before. I'm not used to like going until eight, nine o'clock at night. I'm having a lot of trouble sleeping because of it. Are you just wound up? Yeah. So I probably will call it a night. I've got a few wrap up things and that's that. 
Yeah. But it's been so great. I, I love that we had a chance this week to get on here. It's been crazy. It's so hard to mesh schedules of anybody, anybody, because it's not like I'm so busy I don't have a minute, but you have to coordinate. That's the killer. Yeah. That's we both killer. Have minutes, they're just not always at the same time. Exactly. So, but I'm glad we got to catch up. You look wonderful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I wish I felt that way. I feel like I can get a haircut. God, it's... <laughs> The side effects of pregnancy, they don't really warn you. I mean, I guess you kind of are warned. Well, I will that. tell you, whenever, I think I told this for you, to you, being pregnant with a girl, you don't always look your best. You just feel disgusting, like breaking out like crazy. My hair, like even right after I wash it, it's just like stuck to my face. Like that's. I remember you took all the curl out of my hair. I had ringlets, ringlets. Oh yeah. When we got, when Dad and I got married, I had blonde ringlets. That's how curly my hair was. Yeah. You took all of that out of it, mm -hmm. and then so I think when you have a girl, you're not looking your best. When you have a boy, but then okay, let me tell you this: then you have a boy and you look really good. But after you give birth, after a girl. I may be making this up, but I think I remember this. You look really good again. And after boys, not so much. <laughs> really? Okay. So at least I have something to look forward to. <laughs> you look perfect. <laughs> I could be wrong. I do know it was a hair thing for me. Your hair, there's something about hair. I keep thinking it's like my conditioner or my shampoo, but like, I don't think that's, it's just <laughs> like stuck to my face. It's gross, but I just keep thinking yeah. it's okay. I have a little baby. She needs the. She needs it more than she I. She needs it more than you do. You're a hundred percent right. You're going to be a wonderful mother just by that statement. <laughs> oh my gosh! Every time I tell someone, it's surreal. Don't you love when I text you and I go, "You're having a girl." Yes, and I'm always like, "Oh my god, I am." <laughs> I love to do that to you. It's like, or, oh my God, you're pregnant. <laughs> I crack myself up every time I send those texts to you. <laughs> I know. And you're probably like, I know. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny because it doesn't, it still doesn't. I mean, of course it feels real. Like I know I'm pregnant, but like, <laughs> I don't feel a whole lot different. You will soon. I, I think I'm like right on like, walking that line right now I have a feeling my next doctor's appointment I'll probably feel it a little more yeah you will yeah. it's so exciting oh my gosh it's so exciting so cool. everything about it yeah yeah all right let's go all you right need your rest I need to clean up a bit I gotta eat something <gasps> you haven't even eaten nah, not yet I have a snack I love how you eat um pancakes all the time now <laughs> <laughs> I love that you want to know what though it gives me such a bad headache sugar i have discovered like if i'm craving chocolate or if i like ha like even syrup i have a raging headache for 24 hours it, it feels like a hangover i can't that's not fair no i can't eat processed sugar and enjoy it which i know is probably great because it's preventing <laughs> me from giving the baby processed sugar but gosh darn it if i want pancakes i don't want to hurt afterwards what about extra butter and just a touch, maybe honey? A little, I hate honey. You know what I was actually thinking? Because Justin and I were brainstorming this last weekend as I was like, had a raging headache afterwards. I wonder if I cook down like strawberries and blueberries. Like, you know how they can get kind of- Syrup, blueberries. Yeah, use blueberries and butter. Yeah, and like cook them down. Because I eat blueberries like by the pound every day. So I'm pretty sure when I used to make a blueberry syrup, it consisted of an awful lot of sugar. <laughs> But try, try, try. Look it up. I'll put some like local honey in there and see if it helps. Honestly, as long as it's, ugh, it's such a good thing. It's such a good thing, but it stinks. I think you could do the blueberry thing. I think blueberries would do it for you. Because when we used to go to Mitchell's, remember? And I would get a blueberry Belgian waffle. Oh my God, that was years ago. So that was so good. I could chase it now. <laughs> It was like a lot of blueberries with butter and they got a little syrupy and I didn't even need syrup. I think you're onto something. 
I'm going to, I'm going to start testing it because I have a big box of Bisquick in there and like, I can't let it go to waste. <laughs> I've never even, we are not a pancake family. Oh, how about just blueberry pancakes with butter? Cause you get that. No, sorry. I need to have the dip. I need to dip it in something. Melted butter. It'll be like lobster, but sweeter. <laughs> All right, needles up. All right, so don't forget to go over and watch the video yep. so you can get all the information. If you're like, I don't even know what they're talking about, just go over there and the website will explain it all. Yes, exactly. And all of those links are going to be right down in the down bar if you head below the screen. Um, and if you enjoyed our podcast, which hopefully you did, feel free to give us a thumbs up or subscribe. Um, we see all of the comments that you guys leave on YouTube and we love going through them. We don't necessarily always have the time to respond, but know that we see them and we try to go through and heart all of them so that you know that we see them. Um, so yeah, just know that we're grateful and, and we love spending time with you and you know, until next time. Needles up. Needles up. Bye everybody.